Hello. Today we're going to start talking about quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics and the structure of matter. So what do we need to know uh, for thermodynamics? Well, there are basically three things we need to know. The first is how atoms and molecules store energy. Okay, we know molecules can store energy uh, by translation, by moving back and forth, up and down, in and out, three coordinate directions. Um, that's kinetic energy. Uh, a molecule can also uh, store energy by rotation uh, if it has a moment of inertia, about any axis that it has in a moment of inertia. This is ethane, C2H6, um, so it can rotate in several different directions, uh, but only three independently. Um, it can also vibrate. It can vibrate between the two carbons, uh, like this, uh, but it can also have various bending motions and that sort of thing. And then finally, the electrons have motion around the molecule, and I just represent that with the tips of my fingers. That's the first thing we need to know. How do they store energy? The second thing we need to know is what, if, what is the details of their structure? How do they store energy? Um, in detail. We know from quantum mechanics um, that uh, isolated particles exist in uh, particular quantum states and that those allowed quantum states are described, can be described by quantum numbers uh, and we need to know the properties of those uh, states. And then um, the third thing we need to know is once we know all that, how do the large numbers of particles behave in equilibrium? That's statistics. We've actually already done the statistics. You'll see that once we're done with quantum mechanics, um, then it will be, it, it will go pretty fast uh, to figure out how large numbers of, of quantum mechanical particles, as it were, uh, behave. Okay? But for now, we're going to talk about quantum mechanics. So to begin with, we do know that matter is made up of atoms and that atoms can combine to form molecules. Um, we know that atoms are composed of a nucleus surrounded by electrons. We use the term structure to describe the allowed configuration of an atom or a molecule. From your high school chemistry, you'll recall that atoms uh, have electrons around them. Electrons exist in, in, in orbitals or shells, as they're called. So, for example, what are the shells, allowed shells, for a particular atom? And uh, if we put two molecules together, how far apart are they on average, et cetera? What, if we have more than two atoms forming a molecule, what is their re relative position with respect to each other and so on? Okay. We know that atoms and molecules generally exist in fixed states, known as quantum states. Um, now, there are many situations in which uh, atoms and molecules uh, are undergoing dynamic conditions that cause a change in, in quantum states, but if we leave them alo alone long enough, then they will tend to relax to one of the fixed quantum states or eigenstates um, of the system. Uh, so what is a quantum state? It's an allowed configuration that determines spatial and dynamic behavior of the nuclei and electrons. Uh, so exa for example, uh, certain only certain uh, uh, um, amounts of vibration are allowed. If I have a diatomic molecule, I can have different vibrational energy, um, kinetic and potential energy associated with vibration, but they come in discrete increments. Um, in thermodynamics, we're mainly interested in the kinetic and potential energy of the particles and, of course, uh, what the accumulated kinetic and potential energy um, which we call internal energy of, of a macroscopic system. Typically, we describe the structure of atoms and molecules using, or if we want to describe them graphically, we do so using energy level diagrams. And here are two examples. Uh, the one on the left is for the hydrogen atom. Um, for historic reasons, um, in atomic structure, uh, typically zero energy is considered to be when the, uh, the outermost electron is the furthest away or as far enough away from the nucleus that they are not interacting, that would be zero energy. 
but uh, as the electrons come closer, there's an actually an attractive force, and so um, if you think of it as the as an ion or as a, a an, an ion and an electron coming back together, that's an that's an exothermic reaction releases energy, and uh, so as it drops down in the allowed quantum levels, uh, we get we get more and more energy. So, for instance, for the hydrogen atom, the um, the energy of the lowest state with with uh, comparison to the um, fully ionized state is minus 109,678 inverse centimeters. And we'll talk about the units here, but units of inverse centimeter are commonly used to describe uh, energies in the in the uh, the chemistry and in, in, in physics world. The uh, the the diagram on the right shows a potential energy diagram for a diatomic molecule. What we will learn is that um, because electrons are very, very light compared to nuclei, that the dynamic behavior of the electrons uh, tends to relax uh, to a steady state condition much, much more rapidly than the motion of vibration or rotation. And so we can characterize the effect of the electrons of of all the electrostatic forces in terms of a potential energy. And it looks something like this solid line, uh, which I drew, drew using the Morse potential. Uh, we'll get to what that is later. It's an analytic expression that looks like it ought to look. Um, not very accurate in reality, but that's fine. We'll run into a lot of that. Uh, but it gives the general idea. So when molecules are far apart, there's no interaction. As you bring Two, uh, or the, the nuclei are far apart, there's little interaction if they're far enough apart. But as you bring them together, uh, then the electrons uh, rearrange themselves in a way that results in a net attractive forces. These are called van der Waals forces, and they tend to pull, want to pull the nuclei together. Um, as they get closer to closer together, um, that attractive force comes into competition with the repulsive force of the two nuclei, which have the same charge. And you will remember from freshman physics that likes oppose, opposites attract. So the nuclei are going to oppose each other. And so there's a balance in the force between them, and therefore in the potential energy. And you get what this solid curve looks like. The minimum of that uh, would be somewhere near an equilibrium distance between the two nuclei. The dotted, dotted line. Uh, shows what the potential energy for a harmonic oscillator, simple spring mass system, looks like. And we will, in fact, use that as a, an approximation to get an analytic solution um, uh, for vibration. So what is quantum mechanics? It's the mathematics of atomic and molecular structure. Uh, we seek to determine from the, that using that mathematics we seek to determine allowed quantum states and their energies. Uh, and in the next uh, video, we'll explore, uh, we'll start by exploring a bit of the history of quantum mechanics. So that's it for this video. Thanks, and have a great day.